what is going on patriot gardeners it is your buddy murdoch and i am out here in the arizona backyard homestead ranch and well <laughs> we got some red white and blue going on roxanne you don't have to turn on the red light but uh tonight i'm out here putting in some tomato plants and I thought that you might want to come along for the ride because after two years of R&D trying this in the garden, we've actually reincorporated kind of an old method to give tomato plants calcium to prevent blossom end rot that I, I have to say not only is 10 times cheaper than using bone meal, but the longevity of it when you hear when I get into this, you're going to be kind of blown away and thinking to yourself, why haven't you been using it? The funny thing is, for a lot of you folks, especially the ones that have chickens, you already have this ingredient. So tonight, I have here some pretty nice Brandywine Heirloom. Let me get the package here. Do, do, do. Tomato starts, these guys are about six, maybe seven weeks old, and they are doing pretty good. Um, I did them in a double, <laughs> double ice cream bucket, I guess is what you could say. So I did them in a group this time, so we're going to be actually separating these guys. I know normally you guys see me do the Red Solo Cup, and I do have some in Red Solo Cups, don't get me wrong. And they are much, much bigger than this. But I wanted to get a bunch of them going. So as you can see, I've already put in, what, five already. So I've got about 25 more to go tonight. So first things first, let's talk about the bed. So we're doing the outdoor planting. And over the course of the summer, my chickens were allowed to come out and basically ravage the entire garden. I'm not even going to show you guys because it looks like we've been testing missiles. The grass is finally starting to come back up, and they ate almost every single blade of it. Trust me. And uh, so over that course of time, I would come out and throw compost, organic material, all sorts of good stuff out here into the garden. And the chickens would just go nuts and just start kicking it around, tearing it up, and, you know, getting those nutrients mixed in, plus leaving me all sorts of chicken nuggets all over the place and not the kind you want to eat but probably still better than the ones from mcdonald's <laughs> so uh that process you know which is what most of you guys will be doing during the late fall very early spring or even over the winter months if weather allows in your areas is going to be adding that organic uh, material getting it mixed in uh adding for a lot long you know or slow release uh, fertilizers and getting that stuff really ready for the early spring here in Arizona we have a more unique situation in which our late fall you know anytime after October it's still 85 degrees right now at night and it's 830 tonight um, anywhere between October and all the way up until April even into May of next year is our really our, our high production season. That's when we stay 70, 75 degrees during the day. The plants absolutely love it. We go down to 40, 50 degrees at night. You know, the lettuce goes nuts. So here we are. And when you do your transplanting, it is best to do it either after the sun has already gone down or at least three to four hours before the sun is going to hit these plants. They need time to really set up shop and get going and being able to draw up some of that water and nutrients. And right after transplant, it's pretty hard. So there's going to be a little bit of shock involved. And you want to give them the time that they are going to need to do what they need to do so that they can do what they need to do for you. So anyways, one of the ingredients over the last couple of years, like I was saying, that we added to this bed specifically, and then we didn't add it to the other beds. We just used the uh, the other ingredient. And 
over the course of two years, this bed has outproduced all of the others and has never ever had an issue with blossom and rot. Whereas in the other beds, even though bone meal and calcium has been provided throughout the growing season, we still had a couple plants come up with that issue and it wasn't because of drying out. They had a constant supply of drip. So with that being said, the magic ingredient, let me move on over here. And sorry about the shakiness, I'm trying to do the very best I can, is right here. It is crushed oyster shell. Now, basically, this is almost 100% calcium. And the neat thing about oyster shell, and man, father is great in all the neat things he provides, is that this stuff, believe it or not, can take up to three to 10 years to fully decompose. Now, in a growing season, realistically, let's be realistic, a, a five foot tall tomato plant is gonna need about that much calcium throughout the entire growing season. It is a critical element. It does do its job, but the plant does not need a super duper amount of it. So over the course, of the first 30 to 45 days, you can see the little dust on my hand there. All those little micro particulates from the oyster shell. And I recommend that you get it from the feed shop and at least try to get an organic source. So it's been rinsed and washed and all sorts of good stuff. Or you can rinse it yourself, but I kind of like that dust because that gives an immediate breakdown in the soil. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to take a handful like this. We're going to chuck it right in the hole and we always mix it in and in this hole if you've seen my other videos we have earthworm casting we have a little bit of perlite about two cups of perlite mixed into the bottom you know eight to ten inches of that hole and then we've also started using some of the happy frog tomato and vegetable and i've been testing this stuff out for a year and i must say i'm very impressed it, they have a full line and uh, the happy frog flower and stuff like that and it works great you can get it online it's you know, a little bit pricey to be honest with you but for what it does and the amount you have to use uh, and you can just schedule it every 30 days I highly recommend it they don't support the channel or anything like that they're not a sponsor but you know hey if it works right and then of course we're giving it about two teaspoons of this blood meal, which is basically just pure nitrogen. And these plants, the early stages of uh, tomato development, they're gonna need a lot of nitrogen. So we've had compost in the bed. We've had organic matter added. We've had chicken nuggets dropped by the girls that are better than McDonald's. We have cut grass that we threw in here all sorts of stuff over the three months it's time to get going we've got our hole prepped we've got our perlite in there our earthworm castings our happy frog our blood meal a big handful of these crushed oyster shells and now we've got our tomato plant so we'll just do a quick one on this because you guys have already seen me do this several times but for those that haven't you can go check out the other videos we've got some pretty good ones what we're going to do is we're just going to reach down here. Let me see if I can show you. See where the stems are, how they're kind of separated. I'm just going to put my hand firmly around it and take my thumb and push down behind it. And I'm just going to pull right out just like this and kind of jiggle. And you can see. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Pretty nice for five, six weeks, huh? If you've ever seen the red solo cups or the dead or the uh, double container videos, you'll understand why the tomato starts are this big. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just set this guy in here and get him stood up. Hopefully he stands up. There you go. Awesome. And then we're going to take this other batch that's sitting right here and we're going to move them off behind us because I've got other garden beds that these guys are going in. Okay. 
Now we pre-watered the hole as well. And you can see that with these other guys. And what we're going to do here is we're going to take off some of these smaller lower branches that are right here. We're going to be burying the tomato plant oh about four inches or so maybe six inches into the soil and that's so that these little bumpies that are all over the stem or they're going to form all over the stem that can be formed by the trichomes with the cells that are behind them but they are called advantageous roots they, they form themselves as little knobbies you see them as little white bumps all over the stem anywhere those come into contact with the soil it's going to start producing roots so we give the plant a little bit of a jump start and you want to come up about yay far uh, you know you see people in videos and they're like planting you know all the way up to like right here there's just i mean you can but what happens with these uh the soft tissue plants is you can actually allow bacteria into the plant through the soil you know in areas that aren't hardened out yet and ready for that and it will just uptake it right into it and you, your plant all of a sudden gets blight or you know some kind of bacterial infection even though you've never even got a spot of water on the leaves so you know i mean that stuff happens but you don't want to help it out so we've got our plan in place we're going to go ahead and start pushing some dirt this is going to be kind of fun one-handed but eh, we've done it before so we're going to take the uh, top soil from around here and just kind of push it right in place. Give it a nice firm press. Now, before I finish filling this, even though there is some of this happy frog down in there, I am going to go ahead and give it a top dressing because I want this stuff to water down. And I'm not going to measure this. I'm just going to kind of pour it out and spread it. I'm going to give it about that much. I'm going to say maybe another half cup and I'm just going to go ahead and sprinkle that around right here and get it mixed in and I'm going to give it another big top dressing of this oyster, crushed oyster shell and over this tomato plant's life as I've been as I'm watering it and I'm going to go ahead and bury that down a little bit that oyster shell is going to start breaking down and decomposing and providing this tomato plant with more calcium than it even knows what to do with. Now, we talk about regenerative gardening. As far as cost, bone meal is about, what, 12 to $14 for one pound. I got this organic at the feed store. For 49 cents a pound you do the math and this is much longer with the bone meal you got to treat every three to six months and then that stuff's toast this is going to keep feeding for three to ten years think about that you can spend twelve dollars every six months or you can spend 49 cents every 10 years in optimal conditions. I would say every three to five probably is more realistic, but seriously, you do the myth like 10 cents a year. I mean, this whole bucket here cost me 50 cents. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I have enough to do the entire garden. Every tomato plant I'm going to be putting out, that I have enough. So just keep that in mind. And it's, for regenerative gardening, you could spread this stuff out in a field and just till it in every year. And because of stratification, because this stuff is going to be lighter than the soil strata that it's in, it's actually, some of it will settle down in the first few inches. But as water hits it, this stuff is just going to keep rising up, decomposing, oxidizing, breaking down, and then filtering back down through the soil to the plant roots. A really good option. Uh, a lot of people like eggshells, you know, those take three, maybe four months to begin really breaking down. And then they, after they begin breaking down, uh, what they don't tell you is that in about a month, maybe 45 days, that process is complete and that calcium is, is just gone. It's just completely eaten up.
so keep that in mind so put the right nutrients in the soil add a little bit of extra calcium and you're never ever ever going to have an issue of blossom and rot never ever you're never going to come out and see the black ended tomatoes and be like oh my goodness and you know that kind of stuff and hey i really appreciate all the comments and all of the the nice stuff that folks had to say uh it was neat watching uh people leave comments that they've been growing tomatoes for several years and after trying my method of, of putting them in the ground like this with all the nutrients people were reporting back they had 10 12 and 15 foot tomato plants bigger than they've ever had their entire lives and that's actually a great blessing never forget patriots that father started with a garden for a reason because it was the best place to teach his children how to grow that is not a metaphor that is a lesson for life and something to be learned you know we all have a promise to go back to the garden right well, right now, with what's going on in our country, if you ain't growing, you're in trouble. So I would like to add on to the Maha and the Maga movement and just use the same words. The Maga, let's make America garden again. Let's help people get healthy by teaching them to grow food. Teach them the proper way to do this and why that lesson of why Father started with a garden is so important. It will bring us together as a nation, as a people, as neighbors. This is the time, patriots, where we all pull together and we get through this. And there is only one way, and that's if we return to the garden and all of the things that come with that. Love and prayers to all the folks who've been affected by these storms. My heart goes out to each and every one of you. May God watch over you. I really hope during this time that's about to occur that all of you are safe. I know a lot of you like to watch vicariously and, and live vicariously as snow starts to fall outside and I'm just getting going in the garden. I really do love you all and I really wish for the best and I hope once we get to that green spot homestead that we start having much different videos on a much grander scale to really really begin to teach America how to get healthy by growing their own food. Patriots, I wish you the very best. God bless. Murdoch out.